Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with if you have an egg.com. Little groupy again today. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks for that. Um, but this is Kelly with if you have an egg.com. Today is Sunday, May the 8th, and this is chapter number 271, and it is titled How to Say Yes to Carbs. So hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm gonna get caught up here with you so that I can see you and I can talk to you. Um, but I hope everyone is having a fantastic Mother's Day. I will just go ahead and warn you, if my phone starts blowing up, it is because my niece, hello, John from Home Base. Okay, why am I not here with you? It is because my niece is potentially in labor with her first child, and that will be my first great niece. Great niece, yeah. Hello, Carol Lou. Okay, come on, phone. Let me get caught up here. Um, but hello and happy Sunday, everybody. It is great to see you. I hope those of you that are um, moms, grandmas, Hello, Elaine, helping out with other people's children because they need it. Hope y'all are having a fantastic day. And I do not know why I am not here with you. Let me watch this, please. Let me get on here. Here we go. Okay. Now I think I am with you. Um, but today is, oh, I just saw somebody else. Hold on. Hold on. Hello, Cynthia. It's good to see you. Happy Mother's Day. Um, yeah, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Um, and again, even if you're just helping out with other kids, I promise you those parents appreciate you. And hello, Myra, happy Mother's Day. Um, it is Sunday, um, May the 8th. Hello, let's see, hello, Mary from Pittsburgh and hello, Hattie. Um, today is Sunday, May the 8th. Tiny bit creepy, not too bad. Hello, Lisa from Arkansas. I've just about decided that this is what I sound like all the time now. Hello, Mary Ann from, oh, hello, Mary Ann, sorry. And let's see, oh, Oh no, Carol Lou didn't get to see her son or Peanut today mm, because she's on vacation. That's not that's not too bad. Um, but sorry about the little bit of creepiness again. Again, I've just about decided that this is what I sound like all the time. It's not, but you know. <clears throat> and hello, Kim. Happy Mother's Day to you too. And hello, Marlene sneaking in there. Um, but Alyssa has blessed me with yet another. You know, I don't know whatever this is. So hello and happy Sunday, everybody, and thank you for being here on Mother's Day. Um, a little bit of news again. If you are just joining us, well, first of all, if you are brand new, hello, Sandra from Naperville. It is good to see you and happy Mother's Day. If you're just joining us new, um, please let us know that you are new because we would love to say hi and to welcome you. We love to welcome new people. Hello, Orlando Debbie. It is good to see you. And I hope, um, I hope your baby, I hope Primera got you something really special today. And hello, is it Anna or Anna? I never can remember since it has two ends. Anyway, hello, Anna, Anna. It is good to see you. And hello, Linda. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, if you are brand new with us, hello and happy Sunday. And please let us know that you are here. Hello, let's see, I think Madeline is sneaking in. Hello, happy Mother's Day to you too. Um, but let us know that you're new because we would love to welcome you. Um, and again, hello, Katie. If uh, if my phone starts blowing up, my niece is, she's in labor, but she's not really in labor yet. And I don't know, I've been I've been bugging my brother about it all day long because this will be our first great niece. Hello, Vicky. This will be our first great niece or nephew. Um, and she um, she has gone to the hospital, I think, twice now, or gone to the birthing center twice, and they've sent her home twice. So <clears throat> I know Debbie, again, again with the voice, I said, I'm pretty sure, and hello, Sandy. Oh, Sandy's a new grandma. Congratulations. And hello, Sandra from Demon's Ferry. Debbie, I just said, right before you hopped on, I said, I'm pretty sure I just sound like this now because my voice is creepy you know, more than it's not anymore. But, you know, it was another, um, you know, thanks from um, from Alyssa and hello, Sherry from Cape Coral. It's good to see you. Um, and let's see, yeah, and John said grand, no, no, I know it is a grand niece, but I said, this is our first grand niece or, wait, is that right? Grand, yeah, grand niece. But I said it was our first grand niece or nephew. It's the first one. And hello, aloha, Kathy. Kathy, I probably need to just come to Hawaii for a couple of days just to get rid of this, just to finally just get rid of this crud because um, it just keeps coming back. But anyway, <clears throat> so if my phone starts blowing up, I have been kind of bugging my brother all day wanting to know what the status update is. And I know my brother, he will start texting me during the chat. So I'm just warning you. Anyway, so everybody just keep logging in your thoughts. Hello, Cheryl. It's her first. Um, and it, yeah, and it's pretty exciting. We're all um, very excited about it. And hello, Sherry, it's good to see you. And I know Sandra, at least I'm not the one waiting on the baby this time. Hello, Loretta. So this will be the first time in a long time that it's not been me waiting on the baby. So it's pretty exciting news that it's some other people that have to wait on the baby. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, 
I digress. So today is May the 8th. It is Mother's Day. So again, happy Mother's Day to all you moms, grandmoms, and especially to the people who help out those moms because they need you. <laughs> I'm serious. They need you. Um, just watching Casey's two, you know, for a few hours or overnight at a time. I think how, how on earth do people do this by themselves? So anyway, thank you to everyone who is also helping out um, those moms of small children. Okay. So the news for this month, it's May. Ta -da! It is May, whether you knew it or not. So John and I were, I don't know, we were surprised this week because today was, and have a merry end, today is second Sunday. So downtown, like literally out the door of our loft, turn right and go down, not, it's not even a block. And there is an art show. Hello, Rita, it's good to see you. So there's an art show, it's, um, it's a market, the second Sunday of every month. And it was today. And I thought, how could the market, I actually asked, oh wait, Anna Nicole Smith. Okay, Anna, it's Anna, like Anna Nicole Smith. Thank you for clearing that up. And I'll try really hard to remember it. I'll try really hard to remember that it's Anna because we've got Anna. I think we do have an Anna and we have a Deanna and we have a Dina and a Jean and a Jean that looks like it should be Jeannie. So y'all just have to go ahead and forgive me when I when I mispronounce your names. But anyway, so that market is literally just outside our door and that's in the second Sunday. And I said, how could it already be the second Sunday of the month? We just had first Friday on Friday. We just had it on Friday. Um, <clears throat> and then it took John and I a second to figure out that May started on a, on a Sunday. Anyway, so yeah, I'm already thrown off because today is the second Sunday of the month somehow already. So welcome to May, everybody. Um, the little bit of news that I have so far for May, first thing is it's May and it's Mother's Day. The second thing is in some unsettling news, and this disturbed me more than it probably should have and may or may not upset you or disturb you, but my friend Laura, um, she is a long time Weight Watcher, um, very successful, she is, she's extremely, she's extremely successful and um, she has kept her weight off for years. Of course, she's also a hot yoga fanatic. She loves it, um, but she's very successful. So but she constantly is looking at labels. She's constantly checking things. Um, she is also, um, she is also a, a foodie. Um, so she, she won um, a grilling show here a few months ago. But anyway, so she's constantly looking at things, checking things. She likes to buy things fresh. Um, she likes to buy in bulk and then cook for her family. But this is a disturbing news. So Laura discover, discovered quite by accident that Honey Nut Cheerios ha have a, are marked contains bioengineered products. What? What does that even mean? So she also found some crab dip. So once she saw that, and I don't own any Honey Nut Cheerios, and I sure won't now, I will not be buying any now. She said normal Cheerios, like just regular plain old Cheerios, the kind that I buy, do not say that. But she said the Honey Nut Cheerios have, and she showed a picture of it, has a, like a disclaimer or something. Yeah, yeah, Deanna. A disclaimer on the side of it <clears throat> that says, contains bioengineered products. I don't even know, want to know what those are, but she also found a crab dip because now she's looking for that. I've never seen that. And I'll try to take a, yeah, Debbie's going to go check a box. I'll try, I'll take a snapshot of her post and I'll try to remember to post it later, but that kind of freaked me out. And then she was looking for crab dip at the store and the brand that she normally buys picks it up, had the same message on it. So the brand, and I don't know what brand it was, but the brand of crab dip that she normally gets had that same message on it. She looked at a different brand and it did not say that. So she's assuming that it does not have any bioengineered ingredients in it or products in it, but gross. That's just gross. Anyway, just saying. So you want to check those things out. And Cynthia, I don't know. Um, so, oh, and Loretta's husband's cardiologist just told them this week that they should not eat canola oil. They should only eat olive or avocado oil. Well, I'm good to go on that because that's all I ever eat anyway, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, so I don't know. Genetically modified or bioengineered grossed me out. Okay. So that was a little bit of news. That was some gross news for this month. And then a little bit of extra news in case you all haven't noticed the extra chatter over on the If You Have an Egg Closed group. Um, we have formed and are starting to um, get ready to have some fun 
informative, and hopefully some interactive discussions with our newly formed Egg Lady, Egg Lady volunteer group, and I have lovingly decided to call them the Egg Carton. So I hope as we start to post some things that you all will join in, and I, will, I hope that you will let us know if there are any topics that you want to talk about too. So we're just trying to get some, you know, some interaction going. I know there are a lot of you that would talk. You don't want to start a conversation, but you love being in a conversation. So today I started one of those conversations by um, having a pick three. I mean, that is going to be one of the, I you know Deanna is a chatty Kathy. She's exactly right. She is a chatty Kathy and I love it. She's a, actually, she's a, she's a very creative chatty Kathy. You've got to check out some of the things that she draws and writes, but um but I hope you all will join us in that. And today I posted one just for fun and it was a pick three and you had to pick three of the things. You had to pick three of the four things that I had listed and your choices were, you had to keep three, keep three of them. Tofu, running, anchovies. And then the fourth one was, let me think, it was tofu, running, anchovies. And what was the fourth one? Somebody help me out because it just left my brain for some reason. Oh, drinking um, out of a public faucet or out of like a public drinking fountain. So hands down, the majority of you all either said none of the above, which wasn't, yeah, thank you, Carol, drinking from a hose, or, or drinking from a faucet or drinking from a hose. And the little picture had a squirrel trying to drink out of a water fountain, it was hilarious. Um, <clears throat> but it, the hands down, the majority of you all either said none of the above, which wasn't even a choice. I thought that was hilarious that I picked three things, or four things that grossed you all out so bad that a lot of you all picked none of the above. Um, and then the majority of you after that, it was between tofu and running. And believe it or not, a lot of you all picked tofu because you did not want to run, just like me. Okay, anyway, that's my news for, um, for May. Just some news and some updates, you know, for May. Um, the, this month's theme is myth busting. So I want to bust the myth on not going to in-person workshops if you can. I know that's not really a myth. But um, give me some thumbs ups if you got to go to an in-person workshop this last week. I felt much better even with the creepy voice. So I just gave myself a thumbs up. So thumbs ups. I know, I know. And Myra says, when I was growing up, we always drink out of a hose. Yeah, me too. So no big deal. You just hope the frogs are already out before you start drinking. But anyway, yeah, you city people don't know what we're talking about. But thumbs ups. Um, if you went to an in-person workshop or if you went to a Zoom workshop and give me some hearts. If you attended here with us live last week or if you watched later on demand, Yep, and we've got some bottoms and green chairs, Mary Ann, and I am sure, yeah, I started to say, I am sure Linda's bottom was in a green chair, and yep, oh, lots of, lots of, gosh, lots of thumbs ups and lots of hearts, so good job, everybody. Ooh, lots of hearts. Somebody just posted lots of hearts. So good job, everybody who either went to an in-person workshop, attended a Zoom workshop, or attended with, um, with us live last week or watched it later on demand. Good job, everybody. Here are your virtual Bravo stickers. If you are brand new with us, I give out virtual Bravo stickers because Weight Watchers used to give out real ones and they stopped doing it. They weren't anything exciting, but I loved getting them. Um, but Bravo to everyone for doing that. And especially leading up to Mother's Day. So hopefully y'all were getting your plans together for what you were gonna do in anticipation of the treats that you got today. So I hope a lot of you all got to go out to eat and made some good decisions, or you got some, maybe some flowers because flowers are zero points. So that would be a great idea. But this month's theme is myth busting. So we're gonna spend the entire month of May talking about food, talking about just things in general, you know, weight loss and wellness things in general, that there are a lot of myths surrounding them. And we're gonna be busting some of those myths. So, but last week in chat number 270, we were talking about snacking, about how to become a snack pro. And you all had, <clears throat> excuse me, not planning on the voice going out today, and I'm not planning on coughing. But you all had some great, great, great creative ideas. Um, and it wasn't just everyone walking around with a, you know, with a banana and a clementine and a protein bar. Y'all had some fantastic ideas and some fantastic organizational ideas on how to make sure that those snacks were kept at hand. Um, so we, last week we were talking about deciding, first of all, if it's a snack or if it's a treat. Remember, a snack is a tiny meal in between other meals. And so if it was something like, you know, a banana and some PB2 because it was time to eat or you were hungry in between meals, that's an acceptable snack. If it was a, um, you know, a banana split with ice cream and whipped cream and all that kind of stuff, that's a treat. So first thing was to decide if it was a snack or if it was a treat. <clears throat> the second thing was to make sure you have plenty of options on hand. 
and you all had plenty of options on hand. I have to admit the hummus that I bought for last week's chat, so that was the avocado hummus and it was a little bit spicy and I had it with some carrots. I ate that every day this week as an in-between, you know, it's kind of an in-between meal snack. It was yummy. Y'all know I get bored really easily, but I, I ate it every day because it was, I don't know, it was just different. It was different. I don't normally, I've never had that kind of hummus before. And usually when I'm here at work, I have hummus with, um, with um, sugar snap peas or snow peas or something like that. And I had it with the carrots and it was a really nice change, but it's all gone. It's all gone and it's all done, but it was a nice snack instead of, you know, digging around and, you know, what, what the other things that we have and having, um, and having a treat instead. And then the third thing was, um, variety is a spice of life. So to keep, you know, keep your eyes open and make sure, oh, Loretta loves hummus so much. She could eat the whole container. Yeah. I, you know, I don't even know how much a whole container of hummus would be. We'll have to check that out sometime, but just keeping, you know, keeping your options open in case you want something salty one day or sweet um, or crunchy or all of the above, you know, however you want to do that. And your homework for last week was hashtag pra practice safe snacks, which, you know, again, I thought was quite hilarious. Um, but practice safe snacks and you all were going to pick something, you know, sweet or salty or just pick something, you know, that you that you like for snacks. And you were going to post that so that we could see how you practice some safe snacks, some safe snacking, practice safe snacks. I um, mean, y'all had, again, great and fantastic ideas and there are still, there are still, there's still some homework rolling in. So don't, don't miss out on these. Go back and check them out. But let's see how you did. So Dashing Diva 20 over on Connect. So that is over on WW Connect. Um, if you're not actively looking at WW Connect, there are tons of good things to look at. Um, everyone over there is on WW. So to, to be able to be on Connect, you're paying you know, for your WW membership, for your Weight Watchers membership. So there are no trolls or people out there posting things who are not active Weight Watchers members, or at least not, you know, they're paying to be. So Dashing Diva 20 is over on Connect. Um, and she opened her bag and saw that she had two cuties in there. So when she did her purse check, so Dashing Diva 20 did a, she did a hashtag purse check while she was doing her hashtag practice safe snacks. And she succeeded for some safe snacking. So she had cuties ready to go. And if you don't know what cuties are, they're the little halos, cuties, clementines, or whatever you want to call them, non-perishable. Those things last forever in a bag, in a purse, in a, in a um, gym bag, you know, in whatever. I mean, they last a super, super, super long time. So, so good job, Dashing Diva 20 over on Connect. And then please, if you have not already, go over to the If You Have an Egg closed group and check out what Deanna keeps drawing. She does, she's like the doodle master. I mean, she is the doodle queen. My mom would have ranked her doodling skills, you know, high, you know, high on those charts. Um, so she was over there. She has a snack station. She's been doodling, 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 doodling. And to go along with this creative flow, they have created a snack station. I can't even begin to describe all describe all the awesomeness that um, that went into this. But you have to go see the snack station. She even has a towel hanging below the um, the dry snack area, the the snacks that are not that are non perishable and can be out. She has a towel hanging below that says "Snack Dealer." Is that not awesome? Like, there's no question in her house where to go if you want a snack. There's a snack dealer tag hanging or a towel hanging underneath it. Anyway, that was super cool, Deanna. You continue to surprise me with your very, very creative ideas. And then Jennifer had all of her fruit, her fruit washed and ready to go. And she gets bonus points because she washed her bananas. Ah, but seriously, seriously. Um, yeah, Banana says, I am a grandma. Yeah, so she so she has to know how to doodle, how to make snack bags. Um, but Jennifer has all, she had all of her fruit washed and ready to go. And she, get, ooh, wait, hold on. Carol Lou snacked on mini cucumbers and tzatziki this week. That sounds fantastic. That may have to come for next week. Um, but she does get bonus points for washing her bananas. Um, but she had them all ready to go. And she even had one of those baskets that has the little hangers on it so that she can hang her bananas on there. That helps your bananas stay good longer. So she, she has a zero point snack ready to go whenever she needs one. So bravo to everyone who did their homework this week. Bravo to everyone who is still getting your homework turned in. I love looking through, I love looking through all those and I love reading them. So yeah, bravo everyone for doing your homework. Um, this week though, we are talking about saying yes to carbs. So I want to ask, 
raise your little virtual hand if you've ever done a low, oh, hello, Lynn, raise your little virtual hand if you've ever done a low or no carb diet. So I'm raising my little virtual, mine's not virtual, I'm raising my hand. So raise your little virtual hand if you've ever done a low or no carb diet. And I see some thumbs up, so I'm gonna assume that y'all have done that. Yep, Deanna has, Loretta, yep. I have a feeling most, a lot of us have. Okay, if you're currently doing an extreme low carb, and Debbie's like, yeah. If you're in Carol Lou, Lynette, yeah. <clears throat> I have a feeling all of us have. If you are currently, and so a Saint, so a Saint, or Sandy has, and Myra, if you're currently doing an extreme or almost no carb diet, do you even have the energy to raise your little virtual hand? I ask because some, somewhere, sometime back in my early 20s, I decided that 140-ish that pounds was huge. 140, okay? So stop rolling your eyes. It was real back then, and it, and it felt like it back then. But man, oh man, if I only knew then what I know now, um, you know, right? It would just be so different. So I had decided to try a proven, and I know y'all can see me, but I'm doing air quotes just in case you're listening to this later on YouTube, and that's just youtube.com search if you have an egg. If you're listening to this later on YouTube and you can only hear me, I'm doing air quotes. I decided to try a proven um, diet because it was led by a group of physicians. So I'd love to meet these MDs. As far as I can remember from 35 years ago, it was a bunch of other people who just wanted to lose a lot of weight and they somehow ended up employed there. So now that I think back on it, I'm not really sure who these MDs were um, for this doctor led diet, but it was kind of like a drug rehab place, and, but, except we were all thought we were recovering from carb addiction. Okay, we weren't recovering from anything. This was an extreme or no carb diet. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about you're diabetic and you need to reduce your carbs. I'm not talking about, um, you know, your doctor has put you on a lower carb diet. I'm talking literally almost no carbs. Okay, so. We all thought, I mean, we thought we were recovering, you know, from, from carb addiction, but it just made us crave them even more because we were eating no carbs. And we're going to talk about where carbs come from here in just a second. Um, we did all lose a ton of weight, but then we spent our free time in the parking lot hiding from, from other people and dreaming of, dreaming of wheat thins um, and sneaking and eating food in our cars. Okay, so that's not much of a long-term plan. When, you're, when you go that extreme and cut that much out, that is not much of a long-term plan if you ask me. So here's the fallacy of doing so low, I mean like I'm talking so low or no carb diets, your body actually needs the carbs, so it needs them. Carbohydrates, according to the Mayo Clinic, are important for creating energy and preventing some diseases and even may be useful in weight control. Okay, we've been trained to think of carbs as something that just fuels us like for a jog or for a run or that's going to turn to sugar and then turn to fat. So we're all trained to think that. Um, but it also, carbs also create fuel um, for even just breathing or thinking. And I don't know about you, but I like to think and I'd really like to keep breathing, okay? And I'll put a link to that Mayo Clinic article. Well, Jessica will put it in there in the chat notes when she publishes those tomorrow. Um, but almost everything that we eat has carbs. Meat does not have carbs, but if you're eating any vegetables, any fruit, any grains, a lot of dairy, it all has, it all has some amount of carbs. So when we think of a low or no carb diet, we think of, we just, we think of getting rid of bread, okay? So myth number one, remember May is all about myth busting. So <clears throat> myth number one, all carbs are bad carbs. Carbohydrates that are found naturally in foods, vegetables and grains are good for you, okay? So highly processed foods or sugar, sugar added foods, you know, foods that have added sugar, those are the ones that you want to avoid, especially if you, you know, if your doctor's got you on a lower carb diet. So getting grains, you know, I mean, getting, I'm sorry, getting carbs in grains, getting carbs in vegetables. Um, if you can have fruit, you know, if you're, if you're diabetic and you can have a certain amount of fruit, getting carbs in your fruit, that's a-okay. Might not want to get it in fruit juice, you know, try to get it in something that you chew, you know, and not something that you drink. Um, so myth number one, all carbs are bad carbs. Eh, that one is false. Okay, myth number two, carbs are only found in bread, pasta, and rice. And now I know a lot of people that think that. I know a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm off, I'm off bread. I'm not eating bread right now because I'm doing no carbs. 
okay. You're not eating anything else. I mean, even my non-fat plain Greek yogurt has carbs in it, okay? So myth number two is carbs are only found in bread, pasta, and rice. Nope, not true. Oats, beans, blueberries, even green mm. beans have some amount, you know, have some amount of naturally occurring carbohydrates. So myth number two is not true. Okay, myth number three, avoiding carbs altogether will help me lose weight. Hmm. On the contrary, remember I'm saying avoiding carbs altogether, okay? I'm saying like completely wiping them out. On the contrary, avoiding all carbs will leave you without energy to do normal activities like breathing. Remember, it helps you breathe. Do normal things like breathing and thinking. It could leave you hungry and shaky. And remember the, you know, the thinking and the breathing thing? We need to do those too. So you can't eliminate all carbs. So saying that you're going on a low or no carb diet, you know, it's probably just not realistic in the long term. So your homework for this week is going to be the Good Carb Club. It's hashtag the Good Carb Club. Hashtag T H E G O O D C A R B C L U B. The Good Carb Club. So we're gonna fuel our bodies and our minds um, with some good carbs. And so to join the club, you simp all you have to do is just eat a good for you carb. So remember, we're talking about food. We're talking about food that you can have. Again, if you're diabetic, if you're pre-diabetic, you're going to want to limit some of these things. But so maybe you choose like a whole wheat pasta instead of a white pasta. Maybe you choose um, a whole wheat bread um, instead of white bread. Maybe you limit how much bread you have. Maybe you choose, you know, um, sweet potatoes over white potatoes. I'm not saying white potatoes are bad. I'm not saying white bread is bad. I'm not saying, thank you, Lynn. I'm not saying that that stuff is, you know, off the, you know, off limits and then you can't have any of it, but maybe pick some beans, you know, as your carbs, maybe pick some corn, um, if that's one of your zero point foods. <clears throat> but to be in the Good Carb Club, all you gotta do is just simply post, today I will fuel my body and mind with good carbs by enjoying, and hello, Tina, today I will fuel my body and my mind with good carbs by enjoying, and then fill in that blank. Like this week, I'm retaking um, my assessment so that I can include beans. I'm switching from, I had been on um, potatoes. I had had potatoes and oatmeal or oats as zero point foods. I'm switching to beans this week. So I'm, I'm retaking my assessment so that beans can be included because I have a lot of things, I don't know, a lot of recipe ideas right now that include beans. So I will be saying today, I will fuel my body and my mind with good carbs by enjoying beans. So I'll, that's what I'll do for my homework. So it's hashtag the good, the good carb, la la la, hashtag the good carb club. Um, so go ahead and write that down, take a picture of it, um, just type it into a message, whatever, um, so that you can do your homework and you get can get another super cool badge that I am sure Casey is hard at work on right now. Just kidding, she's at home with two little ones after a long camping trip on Mother's Day. She's probably not even thinking about us right now but tomorrow. We'll get our badge tomorrow. So don't forget to do your homework, the Good Carb Club, and you can tag me on um, Instagram. You can tag me here. You can tag me on Connect, because remember, what's her name? Hashtag Dashing Diva 20. Tag me. She tagged me in a post over on Connect, and I saw it for her homework. Okay, so that is your homework for this week. We're at, we are right here at the 30-minute mark, <clears throat> and since I've got a little bit of the crud again. I'm gonna go ahead and start drinking my water. If you're brand new, at the 30 minute mark, so the first 30 minutes is all classroom talking about what the WW or Weight Watchers topic was from the week before. And then the second half is usually something fun. Not gonna be so much fun this week. I think it's gonna be super helpful for the second half. Um, we're not actually making anything, but this is a very, very, very important topic and I want you all to stick with me. So first 30 minutes was classroom, second 30 minutes, we're gonna talk about something serious, okay? But everybody get your water, go ahead and drink your water. And I have, I have decided that I have way too many mugs that I'm not using. So I broke, broke this one, took it off, whatever, off of my shelf. Go ahead and get your water. And thank you again, Lynn. This one is a Mad Hatter. Tea mug, and this is just water in here. But this is a Mad Hatter tea mug that I've had sitting on my shelf in my office for I don't know how long, but I thought, you know what? I've got some pretty darn cool mugs. I'm gonna get some of them out and drink out of them. Okay, so this is, we're getting ready to start the second half. 
Even though we're not gonna make any food, I'm gonna go ahead and put the apron on just so Casey knows immediately where the second half of the chat starts. So if you're brand new or if you are watching this later on YouTube, um, when the apron goes on, you know that we are at the second half of the chat. So if you just wanted to come for the fun second half, which again, tonight's gonna be more informative than it is fun, but if you just wanted to come for the second half, you'll know when it starts. And Casey also breaks these into two separate videos. So if you go back and watch them later on YouTube, and she usually has those up, um, you know, at some point early the next day, <clears throat> but if you wanted to go back and watch them on YouTube, excuse me while I adjust my shirt, on, it's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. The first video that she posts will, will be an hour long. It'll be the entire chat. Um, and then the second one is just the second half. So again, if you're watching this later on YouTube, that's how you know how to get to the second half. <clears throat> so the first part of tonight's chat um, was chat number 271, and we were talking about saying yes to carbs. Okay, the second half of tonight's chat, let's see. Hello, Trish. Oh, uh oh Trish, you know what, Trish, you know what's weird? At, at five, which is, okay, Trish is saying at five, she checked in and nothing was coming up, so she thought we weren't having the chat, which is eight, is eight Eastern. Same thing for me, Trish, I had to go down and find it, so... I don't know why Facebook's being weird and wasn't prevent and wasn't providing um, notifications, but sorry about that. Yes, we are here. Okay. So second half of tonight's chat, we are talking about seven ways to protect your mental health. So I know that's not any fun food, but this is serious. It's important. Okay. So we're going to talk about it tonight. Um, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. And I don't think it's going to come as any surprise to any of us that the COVID crisis has created some issues that many of us have never, we've never had to deal with before, okay? It's created some, some whole new, I mean, just a whole new genre of issues. And I decided to talk about mental health and protecting your mental health today um, because um, during COVID um, is when I lost my mother. Today's Mother's Day. And I thought, you know what? We just need to talk about mental health today because we've got issues that we've never had to deal with um, because, you know, because of COVID. Being isolated during the pandemic can be just as tough. So when we were isolated during the pandemic and some people are still isolated, some people are still frightened to go back to work, they've not returned to work, they're still having to work from home or they just had to you know, take a, just a different you know, path. But being isolated during the pandemic or having your loved ones isolated or just not being able to be, be with each other um, has, um, oh wait, hold on a second. Ooh, Trish is leaving to go to Greece. Okay, well, that's, that's you know, good for your mental health. And Cheryl, yeah, today is Cheryl's first Mother's Day without her mom. And I uh, believe Scott, if Scott is here, is it also your first? I think it's maybe his first um, as well. Um, but being isolated during the pandemic um, can be just as taxing. It could be just as taxing on your mental health as um, as the loss of a, of a loved one or the stress of a high pressure um, career. I mean, it's real. It's real. So we don't need to ignore it. Um, according to Psychology Today, the World Health Organization <clears throat> has declared a global mental health crisis. And it projects that by the t next turn of the decade, so 2030, so by 2030, the WHO, WHO, the World Health Organization, um, has declared that by 2030, a lifestyle and stress-related illnesses will su will surpass communicable diseases. Okay, communicable diseases. Oh, I'm sorry, Loretta. Loretta's first too. So, communicable diseases mean like this: like Alyssa coughing on me, us probably sharing a drink, you know, because I like the ability to tell her no, and then she gave me, you know, this this rounds croup. That's a communicable disease. So lifestyle and stress-related illnesses, there's no mask you can wear for that. There is no, you know, there's no vaccine that you can get for that. Um, so this is a serious deal and I wanted to go ahead and talk about it tonight. Um, <clears throat> weight loss and wellness go hand in hand um, with the way we think, the way we feel, um, and are greatly affected by these lifestyle and stress-related illnesses that you might not even know that you're experiencing. Um, so what are some things that you can do to protect your own mental health. Um, number one, don't ignore it, okay? So I don't care how strong you think you are, how brave you think you are, how much you think you have to be the strong one, the brave one, the whatever, you know, I'm just gonna keep using the word strong and brave. Um, 
just because that's what's popping in my head, um, but don't ignore it. So diagnosed or not, don't assume that you can take care of it on your own, okay? Um, some are um, worse than others, and you might not need an actual professional, just depending on the severity and you know what's going on, but don't ignore it. Um, it's, they're real, it's real. Um, and these tips, the tips that I'm gonna give you, and this one's number one, these tips hopefully will help, but don't ignore signs and symptoms. And for heaven's sake, if it needs to be discussed with, with a professional, go seek professional help, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, so don't ignore it. So don't ignore it, um, mental, mental health, these kinds of crises, you know, they're real, so don't ignore them. Okay, number two, find an accountability buddy. We talk a lot about accountability buddies for weight loss and wellness goals. You know, I'm constantly telling you all to find one. If you don't have one, get one. You know, asking people, do you have an accountability buddy? Do you need an accountability buddy? Can you all talk to each other? Even if you don't live near each other, can you, can you check in with each other every day, every week, every, you know, something? So find an accountability buddy. It's true, accountability buddies work fantastically well um, for weight loss and you know and wellness issues, but they but it also holds true for mental health issues as well. So you wouldn't ask a recovering alcoholic to, to go do to go do it by themselves. No one would tell someone who is recovering from alcohol, which is which is a disease. Alcoholism is, is a disease. No one would tell an alcoholic, oh no, you know what, you got yourself into this mess, you go get yourself out. You wouldn't do that. Um so why do we think that anxiety, anxiousness, sadness, overwhelming sense of doom and gloom, why do we think those require isolation? Um, so whatever the situation is, I promise you, what doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what's, what's causing this or how you feel, I promise you there is someone else that's going through the exact same thing. And you know, I truly believe that we are stronger together. So I hear all the time, oh, nobody else is going through this. Okay, it might not be the exact same scenario, but I know every scenario, there's someone, there is someone else either going through it, been through it, lived to tell about it, has a family member going through it, whatever. If you don't have an accountability buddy, get one, okay? And it doesn't just have to be one for weight loss. If you need an accountability buddy for talking about whatever is going on, get one and then use them, okay? That's what they're for. Okay. <clears throat> Number three, and this one, I am preaching to the choir, okay? Literally preaching to the choir. If you can't do everything, do one thing, okay? So I know, I don't know about you, but every day, every day, <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry, Debbie just made an, an important point. She said the generation that brought it, that, you know, that we grew up in, so our generation, we were brought up that we, that we shouldn't talk about it you know, couldn't talk about it, shouldn't talk about it, and that it was violating a taboo. We ain't there now, okay? We can talk about anything and everything, so let's do it. Um, but number three is, if you can't do everything, so if you can't do all the things, do one thing. And I am preaching to the choir here when I say this. So I don't know about you, but my days are filled with lists. So I start every day with a list, and then that list grows lists. I have lists that grow from that list, and then when everybody else starts waking up, that's why I start my day. John and I usually start our day at about 5, 5.30 because once everybody else starts their day, then the list that we started with that grew babies from that, that grew other lists, now there are people that are awake that are adding their list to our list um, that I didn't even know, things that we didn't even know needed to be put on our list. Um, and there has not ever been and there will not ever be a day that I can get every single thing on all of those lists done, okay? It's not gonna happen. And I'm not saying that as a, oh, poor pitiful me, you know, I should be upset and whatever. I, it's taken me a long time to realize this. I cannot, there's no way. The, I mean, some of these lists are outside of my control. So there's no way that I will get them all done. Um, and I used to have just overwhelming guilt. I mean, I used to have this sense of overwhelming guilt at not being able to get them done. And then that would lead, lead to anxiety. And then that anxiety would just start spiraling out of control. And then guess what? Then I'd get none of it done. So then none of it would get finished because I would spend so much time agonizing over the fact that all of it wasn't gonna get done, that then none of it would get done. You know, I would just go, forget it. I'll just forget it. I won't do my stuff. My stuff won't get done. I'll come do your stuff. I'm not gonna get any of it done. 
and that is a downward spiral. So you'll have to find your own way. <clears throat> you'll have to find your own way to decide what the one thing is um, that must be done, even if the rest of it does not get done and is, is going to be okay, you know, if it's still there the next day. Um, <clears throat> I love my post-it notes, okay? For, but for a mom of little, so for somebody that has, you know, small children, um, their list may be pack everyone, including myself, mom, a healthy lunch today. That may be the most important thing that gets done that day is just making sure that everyone was packed a lunch, okay? Because you don't want your kids to get to school, preschool, Mother's Day out, whatever it is. You don't want them to get there and yourself get to work after you drop everybody off without something healthy to eat. So maybe the most important thing for that day is pack everybody a healthy lunch, okay? So matching socks, perfect ponytails, peer pressure play dates, you know, those might have to wait. Those might have to wait until the next day or the next day. So just do the one thing. I love my little post-it note planning, you know, my little post-it note planning walls. And so I try to put on there the one thing that absolutely has to be done, even if nothing else gets done. So like on Fridays, it's payroll. Nobody cares if anything else gets done on Friday. They'll have lists and lists and lists and lists. But let's face it, on Fridays, payroll is the only thing that matters to anyone around me, okay? So let's pretend like it's Friday. So I'll take whatever the one thing is that absolutely has to be done, no matter what else, no matter if nothing else gets done, and on my little post-it note wall, that's the first thing. I put it in the upper left-hand corner. And the reason I put it in the upper left-hand corner is because it's in that, you know, like that A1, that row A or column A, row one kind of spot, you know, there on our, um, on our court board. So it's in that, you know, that premium spot. Um, and sometimes I'll make it a different color if I need to, um, you know, if I need, and, and Carol Lou, I understand, Carol Lou is saying prioritize. I have prioritized lists until I got nothing done because I spent the whole day prioritizing it. So I have, for me, and, I, and I'm serious, this is a great mental health thing for a lot of us who are um, uh, habitual multitaskers and who think we have to get it all done and we're savers of the planet and savers of the universe. So I put that one thing that absolutely has to be done. So for me on Fridays, that one thing is payroll, okay? And I put it in that upper left-hand corner. And then that way, if that's the only thing that I get done, so I've got all this other stuff that's grown out next to it, but if that's the only thing that I got done, I have the satisfaction of taking that off the board, throwing it away, or if I'm gonna put it in a stack that day or whatever I've decided to do, and I can start my, my next day with one clean spot. Now, would I love to get all of them done or a lot of them done or whatever? Sure, but if nothing else gets done, then I can have one clean spot in that upper left-hand corner and then whatever is the most urgent for the next day, the next day it can move to that spot, okay? But that corner gets to stay clean. It does not, it does not get replaced. There's not a new one thing, okay? It's amazing what having a clean one spot will do for your anxiety. I mean, it has saved me from literally just going home and eating, you know, I don't know, a half gallon of ice cream that shouldn't have been at the house or brownie batter or whatever it has saved me from doing that having that one clean spot and then the next day one thing is to take that spot now again that doesn't mean i don't try to get everything else done that day but if i can get nothing else done do one thing so if you can't do everything do one thing same thing with weight watchers same thing with um with you know with everything that we're doing here and i tell you all this all the time and i'm not going to try and i got a little bit of time so well, let's just keep talking about this so this one thing, if losing weight, getting healthy, if getting into a different size, whatever, if that's if that's what's stressing you out right now, and again, this is real. This is not this is not imagined stress. This is not imagined anxiety. This is not, you know, if your doctor's saying you have to lose 30 pounds before you can have X, Y, and Z surgery, and it is just an overwhelming black cloud of I can't do this or doom and gloom or I'm going to die from X, Y, and Z because I can't lose 30 pounds so that I can have this, you know, whatever this surgery is. We talk about this a lot. If you can't do all of the things, so if you can't track every day, if you can't meal prep, if you can't get your water in, if you can't get all your vegetables in, if you can't blah, 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 blah. If all of it is overwhelming, if you can't do all the things, then do one thing. Just pick one. Pick one. So maybe your one is prepping your lunch, is making sure you have a good lunch. Then you know what? That's your one thing. You've done your one thing. And you know what'll happen the next day? 
you might prep your lunch and you might also get your dinner ready. Then a couple of days from then, you think, you know what, that wasn't too bad. I can prep my lunch, I can get my dinner ready, and I can go ahead and make something for the next day because my dinner could be my breakfast, you know, the third day. And little by little, those one things, if you make sure you get the one thing done, like today, I almost, almost got my post-it wall cleared because I picked my one thing, got my one thing done, you know, and then I just let it go and I moved on. And it actually helped me to be more productive because my brain wasn't cluttered with, but what if this, and what if that, and what if this, and what if that? Okay. Number four, control what you can when everything is out of control. So you already know that that's my favorite line from Frozen 2. If you didn't know that, then this is your first time watching, okay? So that's my favorite line um, from Frozen 2. So all of Arendelle is just like in mayhem. I mean, total chaos. So Anna or Elsa has summoned, you know, earth, wind, fire, and water, and it's destroying their, um, their town. Um, but I mean, it is absolute chaos and nobody knows, are they going to have a home? Do they have a home? Are they all going to be crushed? Are they going to be flooded? Is it, you know, everything going to burn down? They don't know. And then Olaf, and if you don't know who Olaf is, again, you need to go outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have small children, even if you don't have little kids, you should know who Olaf is. But anyway, so Olaf is a little snowman simply says, you know, everybody else is like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And they turn around and look at Olaf and he's sitting on the ground and kids are sticking, um, they're just sticking like uh, snowflakes and whatever, you know, in like making a little beard. And they're like, are you, you know, are you okay? And Olaf just simply says, I call this controlling, let's see, I, tr I call this controlling what we can when everything is out of control. Perfect. It's perfect. And since today is Mother's Day, I do not know why, but when I thought of Olaf and when I thought of trying to control things when they're out of control, my mind jumped straight to all those poor little moms in the Ukraine. And I do not know why my brain just went straight there, but I thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That so reminds me of watching these poor women running with their babies, you know, clean, you know, their babies clinging to them and dragging kids and, and, you know, not having anything, whatever. Um, but they're, you know, all these poor little moms running from, you know, running from their homes, feeling much the same way. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Is my village going to burn down? Is there going to be, is it going to be flood? What's going to happen? What, and what's waiting ahead of us? Is there anything even, you know, ahead of us waiting? Can you imagine the amount of stress? Can you imagine the mental, just the mental strain that they are under right now, the anxiety, the hopelessness? I mean, they have to feel like there's not going to be anything to go home to. But, but then they cross the border. And I've seen time after time after time after time after time, a complete stranger walks up and hands this poor little mom that doesn't know now what, now what's going to happen, hands them a stroller and some clean water. Those moms can't control what's going on behind them. That's already, that's happening. It's happening with or without them. They can't control that but they can put their baby down in the stroller. They can give it some water. They can rest for just a minute. You know, they, they can control, they can control what's right in front of them. That's all they can control. So control what you can when everything is out of control. Do not try to control something that's way out over here that you don't have any control of, okay? You will drive yourself crazy. So control what you can in this moment, whatever this moment is, control what you can in that moment, and the rest is just going to have to worry about itself, okay? <clears throat> so control what you can when everything else is out of control. Number five, make one thing so easy that you don't even have to think about it. If you will pick one thing in your life that is so easy, just make it so stinking easy that you do not have to think about it at all. Um, reducing unnecessary stressors in your life it, it will, it can only improve your mental attitude. Okay. And it could be something that's so minuscule that you think, well, how is that even going to help? Um, but somebody that's just unnecessary, something that's just unnecessary for me to think about, it's just unnecessary for me to have to stress about this is having a snack. Okay. So, you know, I, I spend, used to spend hours thinking, oh no, what if I get stuck at this job site and I have to go through McDonald's? You know, because if you get stuck at a job site, McDonald's is the only option that you have. You know, what if I get stuck at this job site and I don't have anything but the golden arches? What if Alyssa's hangry when I pick her up from school and then if she's hangry, then I'm going to get upset and blah, 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 blah. 
Um, what if, what if, what if, what if? So I, you know, we talk about purse checks all the time. Hashtag purse check. We just talked about snacks. So I have made, I've put all my snacks in a handy dandy reusable bag um, that can go. And so it's got all those snacks that we were talking about last week. It has those in there. I have an already washed apple. I have my, um, one of my four point, um, <clears throat> you know, the nuts. I've got a pack of crackers. I've got a pack of peanuts. So I've got it and I keep water, um, you know, with it too. So that this way, but this is what I'm talking about, making it so easy that it's just, you don't even have to think about it anymore. This being in this little bag, this can go in my purse. And then if I switch to my backpack, this can go in my backpack. And then if I switch from my backpack, this can go in a diaper bag if I've got the girls. And then this can go in the stroller if we go in somewhere. Do you see what I'm saying? It's so easy. Like I have, I've just eliminated the snack question from my life. Okay. So make it easy wherever, wherever this is, it's there. Just find something and make it that easy that you do not have to worry about. That's just one thing you can check off your list that you do not have to worry about. Okay. The next thing is keep your brain sharp. Keep your brain sharp. And I know you're thinking we're, we were supposed to be talking about mental health. We are, but keeping your brain sharp and firing on all signals um, is going to be key as you age. Don't know if you know this or not. All of us are getting older. So tomorrow, all of us who wake up will be one day older than we were today. And the next day, we will be one day older than that. Okay. So we're all going to continually getting older unless we come to a screeching halt. You know what that means. But we are all going to continue to get older. So as you age, it's important that you keep your brain sharp because keeping your brain sharp is also going to help you to be able to, you know, deal with some of these issues that are going to come up. So, um, in the April 2022 edition of the AARP Bulletin, and no, I do not get AARP, even though technically in a month I will be old enough to, um, don't get this. This comes in our mail for John's mom, so I took it. So, page 38 of the April 2022 edition of the AARP Bulletin, and there's an article about helping older Americans um, keep their brains sharp and healthy. And... They say in this article that in November, so back in November, the Global Council on Brain Health released a guide to help members regain those social interactions that they lost during the pandemic. Sound familiar? It doesn't matter how old you are, we all lost a lot of social interactions during the pandemic. Things like volunteer opportunities, music, art, and dispelling the, and dispelling the myth that cognitive decline is inevitable are all things that can keep your brain active and healthy. And I will put a link, a link to the um, digital version of this article um, on the notes so that you can so that you can log in and get that. That was pretty sharp. So that was pretty sharp information. Um, caught my attention and I think you need to go and read it. So keeping your brain sharp, doing things like music, crossword puzzles, um, playing games, um, visiting with people, being social with other people. And I'm not talking about doing Zoom meetings. I'm talking about doing things with other people, keeping your brain sharp. That is gonna help. It's, it's gonna help with your mental capacity in the long run. Okay, and I have just enough time to talk about the last one. So just keep walking. Number seven is just keep walking. And I feel like Dory from Finding Nemo. If you do not live your entire life based on references to Disney movies, we can't be friends. I'm just kidding. You just have to bear with me. So number seven is just keep walking. And I do feel like Dory, you know, when she's singing, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, la, 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 la. So just keep walking, just keep walking, la, 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 la. Okay, seriously, going outside, breathing air that didn't run through a building or through a filter, being away from social media. I love it when y'all are here with me. I love it when y'all are commenting on things over on If You Have an Egg. But for a few minutes every day, you need to get away from it. Get away from social media, get away from your computer, get away from the blue flickering lots, you know, of a television, um, and get away from soul stealing video games. Okay, I love video games, and I used to play video games incessantly when Casey was little, but they will steal your soul, okay? So go outside. Um, we're made to move. Our bodies are made to move, so do it. During one of our lowest times, um, lowest and most stressful times um, with my dad's business, I was concerned that I would explode. And when I say I was concerned that I would explode, I actually had at least one panic attack and had to be taken to the hospital. I know, I usually seem so happy, but this was such a stressful, overwhelming, 
didn't know to just control what I could control and let everything else control itself. You know, I didn't have all these tips yet. Um, but it was so stressful. Again, I had at least one panic attack that I, I, I thought I was dying. I'd never had a panic attack. And fortunately, I don't think I've ever had one since then, but I thought I was dying. And then a couple of days later, burst a blood vessel in my eye because I was, I don't know, gritting my teeth, blood pressure was, I don't know what was going on, but a blood vessel burst in my eye. So it was such a stressful time. Um, it didn't matter how much I wanted to feel okay. It didn't matter um, how much I didn't want to be stressed, how much I thought, oh my gosh, literally my entire family, because my dad owned the company. I worked there. My brother worked there. John worked there. Casey was part-time. You know, literally my entire family depended on these decisions that we were making. Um, and it didn't matter how much I wanted to do it all. I thought I was going to explode. And I literally thought that I would lose my mind. Literally thought I would lose my mind. So, and sitting and trying to be okay wasn't working. So, one day I thought, you know what? I can't do this. I cannot do this. I'm just going to go for a walk. So, and John was cool with that. He was like, go, go do whatever you need to. So, I went for a walk. And then the next night, I went for another walk. And then the next day, I walked a little bit in the morning before, remember, everybody, before everybody got up, everybody else was still in bed. They weren't up yet going, Kelly, 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 you've got to make a decision. Kelly, Kelly, you've got to blah, 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 blah. So, I got up and walked. And then went to work and when I got home I started walking again and I couldn't tell you how many miles it was or how often it was or whatever but for weeks and weeks and weeks and months every morning and every night every morning and every night I just walked and I walked I walked until I couldn't walk anymore okay and then um, and while I was doing that the squirrels weren't judging me the squirrels were saying what kind of life-changing decisions are you gonna make for all of us today Kelly they didn't care. They were just happy I was out there. Um, but if you, and if you aren't physically able to walk, find another way to move. And if you can get outside, get outside, but do something, just move. And I'm going to tell you that saved my sanity. And I just about lost my cookies again during COVID because we couldn't, we couldn't, I couldn't go walk with Karen. We are made to move, go outside, I went for a walk this morning. It wasn't a long one, but Dusty and I went outside and we were both better and happier people for it, even though he's not a people, um, but do it. it. It saved my sanity, it has saved my sanity over and over again. And it just may, maybe not save yours, but it may protect yours. So, okay, again, seven things, and I'm gonna go ahead and wind down because my voice is starting to get really croaky, but those are seven ways um, that I hope that you'll try to um, to help protect your mental um, your mental health. If you've got other, there are tons of ideas, <coughs> but it is going to be time to wind down. Let's see, controlling things that are out of control. My voice is out of my control, so I'm going to control this by going ahead and wrapping up, okay? So, y'all have a great evening. I hope you will try some of these things, and you'll let me know. Don't forget to do your homework. Um, I think it's very important that you do your homework too, and I love seeing it. I love it when y'all do your homework. Um, but y'all have a great week. If you are watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and let that next video roll over. The next one's about snacks, so you wanna go ahead and let it roll over. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so that you will be notified when our next video comes up. But you all have a fantastic week. I hope you had a great Mother's Day. Um, and yeah, y'all have a great week and I will see you next time. Good night.